Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Up to date I have another Backman Tender Loco. So today's loco I picked up at a train fair a couple of years ago now, or at least a year ago. I thought it's about time it came out of its box and saw daylight for the first time, if you can call the artificial lights in this room daylight. So it is this, it is the Backman Hall class. And when I saw this I thought, you know, some people are quite interested in the older locomotives. And you can tell by the box really, it certainly is a little bit old. I didn't realise it at the time, but Backman still produce this model today. If we look at their website you can see they certainly do. and for a very modern price as well, £169.95. I've had to show you the weathered one because the unweathered versions aren't listed at the moment, but those were £10 cheaper at £159.95, which is even worse. Some manufacturers, like Oxford Rail for example, don't charge you a penny more for weathering, and here you're paying an extra £10. Talk about squeezing you for every penny. Anyway, typical retailer price for this version, £135, as we can see there at Rails of Sheffield. Now, when I saw this in its old tatty box, I didn't have very high expectations, but knowing that this is still in Backman's range today for so much money, my expectations have changed quite a bit. I actually have quite high hopes for this. Now, when I bought it, I did unbox it and service it because obviously it is an older model and I wanted to make sure mechanically it was sound. And I believe it was, although as I say, this was a long time ago, over a year, I believe. So well, I don't remember much about this. Let's find out together. Let's see what this is like and find out whether this is worth 160 or 130 pounds. No comment. So I wonder if this is kind of like an in-joke at Backman, because as usual, the photo on the front of the box is totally unrepresentative of the model inside. I mean, come on guys, you know more than one photo exists of the whole class, right? It's not that difficult to get rights to use photos. Anyway, let's not turn this into a rant. You can see by the front of the box, this one is DCC ready, which does sort of demonstrate that this is slightly more modern. I believe the decoder is in the locomotive though, and not the tender, and I think that is still true of the newer models too, which is a bit concerning given the price, but we'll look into that when I get the thing out. Let me show you the end of the box then, so you can see the product code for mine is 32 002. It is 5960 St. Edmund Hall in the BR Black, so there we go, that's the livery of mine, and it has the early emblem as well. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing this. I, I, it's weird, but I seem to have had total amnesia over this one because I cannot remember anything about it. All right, here we go then. So we have the card on the top with the photo of it clearly showing late BR Green, so it couldn't be more wrong, could it? Hall class, it says. On the back, oh, there we go. You've got the line drawing of the class, which looks beautiful, and then a brief history, too. So feel free to pause and read that if you'd like. Did I get any instructions? Oh, I did. I did get some instructions. All right, let's take a look at the diagram, first of all, then. Okay, so you can see the arrangement inside there. This is not a split chassis loco or anything. We do have a reasonably modern mechanism inside there. And you can see we have a kind of standard looking Backman cam motor inside there, which is fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't reveal too much about the model really, does it? But it's nice to have that. Okay, and then what else have we got? There's a guarantee here and a thing about the collector's glove. All right, so <laughs> yeah, it seems to be a bit light on the old instructions actually, doesn't it? Unless the previous owner misplaced them or something. I'm not sure about that. Right. Let's peel these back and take a look. All right, now, expensive or not, as the modern version may be, and it may be much more so than this version was, you can see that this is very, very smart. I'm so glad that this is lined because the red lining on the boiler there makes this look so smart. And I really don't have many, if any, locos in the sort of early VR black which are lined like this. So this is actually a really nice surprise. I had forgotten how nice this was. Anyway, so there's a detail bag right here. Uh, or in fact, there's two detail bags. Now these look like they're both for the loco, but I'm guessing one of these is for the tender. It's brake rigging, as you can see. So that's fair enough. Not an awful lot of detail to fix yourself then so that's pretty good it means that everything else is done at the factory whether the latest versions are the same in that regard I'm not too sure but they should be because as you can tell this packaging is quite old-fashioned okay the tender there it is as you can see it looks good it does look good you can see we have no pickups or anything on the tender and as I say pretty sure that's the case on the latest release as well there's a rails of Sheffield photo which clearly shows that there are no wires alongside the drawbar there 
And that's not on, is it? I mean, even the Hornby Railroad Hall class has tender pickups. Um, yeah, it's very shoddy, is that, unfortunately. But this tender does look good. As you can see, we've got nice metal buffers on it. Yeah, very good, very good. We'll take a closer look at that later on. Let's have a look at the Loco then, see what this is like. Let's lift this out. All right, so I mean, just holding it, you can see why a degree of expense would be involved with this. It does have a die cast running plate, which is really good, actually. That is something that the Hornby Railroad version did not have, and that is good. You know, that adds a lot of weight to the loco. It does feel pretty hefty in the hands, actually, and I will weigh this to give you an idea of uh, how much it actually weighs. Let me hold the tender with it then. I mean, yeah, like I keep saying, expensive or not, the thing looks great, doesn't it? Maybe there's a little bit more finesse in this version than there is in the Hornby. Certainly not where the mechanism is concerned, and I do remember servicing this and being a bit underwhelmed by the mechanism. But as far as the actual aesthetics of the thing look, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. So, here's a little bit of history on the Hall class, and when that's over with, we will take a nice close look at this. So the Hall class or the 4900 class was first introduced in 1928 to the design of Charles Collett and for many years the Hall was the basically the standard mixed traffic engine on the Great Western so there were a lot of them around. The class was heavily influenced on the Saint class which went before them and it was very closely related to them mechanically as well although it was much larger and much more powerful of course. They proved to be extremely successful locomotives, so much so that other railway engineers, such as Thompson of the l &E R, for instance, took inspiration from their design to create their own locomotives. In addition, an impressive 258 of these were produced in total over 15 years, which is quite a long time actually for a single class to be produced, given how many different 460s actually existed over the history of the Great Western. In 1948, the halls became part of the BR fleet, and that's when they would have looked pretty much like this model, I imagine, and they were classified as 5MT, which is quite high, isn't it, for a loco of this size? Not bad for a design dating back to 1902, at least. Around 10 of them have been preserved, which I think is a reasonably healthy number, although very sadly, as always, the rest were scrapped. So there you have it then, the Backman Hall class up close and personal for you, and I think we can all agree, this is beautiful. I absolutely love this. Overall, it is a really, really nicely put together model. It must be said though, it's not quite meeting modern standards in my opinion, and I'm not really seeing anything on here that would justify the latest RRP of £169.95. And actually, a lot of the minor faults and issues with this loco are corrected on the far, far cheaper Hornby Railroad Hall class. So let's take a look at some of these issues to start with. Well, first of all, you've got a very ugly and noticeable parting line right across the top of the boiler and smoke box there. Modern locos would be better designed than that. Those parting lines would be hidden in a more inconspicuous place, as is the case with the railroad version. Yes, as you can see, no ugly line across the top there. Next up, we have a bit of a lack of separately fitted parts. You can see the whistles are just kind of extruded from the piece that they're fitted to. They're not separately fitted at all, and they look strange because like they're, they're connected to the bonnet that they're sitting in, aren't they? Again, the Hornby Railroad version looks much better than that. And also things like the smoke box dart. It's not separately fitted. The front part looks like it is. The back part's not. That is a bit better than the Hornby Railroad version because that's entirely moulded on. But the other thing is, look at the size of these lamp brackets. These look ridiculous. Look at the size of that and on the running plate as well. Those look like they're twice the size they should be. And if you look at the Hornby Railroad version, you can just see how oversized those are. So there's a bit of a lack of finesse going on with that. I mean, the name plates, for instance, they're not etched, they're just plastic. The Backman has a plastic reversing rod, as you can see, which doesn't look the best. I mean, they're metal in real life, and they look it. The railroad version, much better in that regard as well. That does have a nice, shiny metal reversing rod, which I think looks much better. Besides that, though, the Backman looks fantastic, and it feels fantastic in the hands, as I've said. It weighs a lot. This weighs in at 344 grams, which is almost 100 grams heavier than the Hornby Railroad Hall class, so it's not entirely worse than that. And as I say, the running plate being made of metal is a credit to this loco. It just feels fantastic, and it looks great as well. You can see it's got a really metallic texture on it, and there's so much riveted detail on there. It looks absolutely amazing. The decoration is really nicely done, even for a loco of this age. As you can see on the boiler, we've got beautiful lining there, which looks great. All the splashes are beautifully lined. Look at that. Really, really lovely. The side of the cab, you've got the running number uh, printed onto there, which looks great. 5960, all lined. The, the cab windows are glazed and lined, as you can see. 
yeah, the decoration is top notch. We do have a bit of painted cab detail. It is a little bit lacklustre by modern standards, but to be honest, I was a bit surprised to see painted cab detail inside there, which is pretty good. We've got quite a few separately fitted parts. I mean, the handrails are all separately fitted on the boiler around the cab. And over on the other side, you can see we do have separately fitted pipe work as well as the handrail. Uh, that's not the case on the Hornby Railroad Hall class. Uh, it's just moulded on that version. So fair enough, there's a bit of a difference there too. One thing I do like and quite impressed by is the top or the tip of the chimney. Now that to me looks as though it's made of metal. The finish on that looks entirely metallic as far as I'm concerned. Feeling it though, it is obvious that it is just plastic, but that is wonderful. If all painted plastic looked as good as that, I don't think I would complain about it being plastic and not metal as much. That looks fantastic, I really do like that. The wheel set looks great as well. As you can see, the axles have been covered up, they're sort of painted over. You can still kind of see them, but they look much better than they would if they were just left blank. It's clear to me that Hornby's are better though, as you can see, yeah, they're just much more nicely moulded and a lot tidier as well. The connecting and coupling rods look really nice and fine, and the piston assembly here is really nicely moulded, as you can see, which looks great. The cylinders are nicely lined, as you can see, and they do have the cylinder drain cocks uh, separately fitted to them on the underside, but they are just plastic and they don't, well, they've not been painted or anything, so they just sort of blend in. Maybe that's typical of this livery, maybe that's just something that they neglected to pick out. I'm not too sure, but they're not a, a big deal, I would say. The front buffer beam looks great, as you can tell, lots of riveted detail on there. We've got the separately fitted uh, vacuum pipes on there. The buffers are made of metal and they are sprung, and that is definitely a modern feature, isn't it? I mean, that's the kind of thing that makes this worth the money, I would say. Not that it is overall, because that's one of the few features that is that impressive. We do have NEM couplings as well, which is another nice modern touch. Uh, they are pre-fitted to the front and back of the model, which is pretty good. So, yeah, that's all right, isn't it? So there we go, that is the Loco. It looks all right overall. Like I say, it doesn't quite meet modern standards, but on balance, it's not too bad. Is it worth 165 pounds, sorry, 169 pounds? No, I don't think so, no. I think other manufacturers can offer far better Locos. On balance, for how much cheaper it is, the Hornby Railroad Hall Class, I think, is a much better option, particularly as far as the mechanism goes, but we'll get onto that later on. Let's have a quick look at the tender then. As you can see, the decoration is just as good. I love the sort of early crest BR there, which looks great. The lining is fantastic as well. I mean, I can't fault the decoration at all on this model. It looks wonderful. The underframe is a little bit basic without the brake rigging fitted, but no doubt it would look a lot better if I put that on. Nice metal wheels on the tender, but with no pickups. It's a bit of a shame about that. For the money, again, that could easily have been rectified. I mentioned these earlier, but we've got these little metal buffers between loco and tender, which looks great. The loco and tender join isn't particularly convincing. There's no proper tender full plate or anything. There is an option to close couple the loco and tender, which would mitigate that unrealistic look a little bit, but overall I've seen better, I think. The coal in the tender looks good. It looks as though it's that sort of glossy metal that's been sort of sprayed black. It's not though, it is just plastic, I believe, and I'm not sure if that's removable. It doesn't look as though it is. I can't get it to shift. Around the back, we've got more of those very oversized lamp irons. I mean, maybe this is just as they were starting to separately fit them and they couldn't get them nice and fine. I would hope that the modern releases of this model would be a bit better in that regard, but hmm, maybe they're not. More sprung buffers, more vacuum pipes, and as I mentioned, yeah, we've got the NEM coupling on the back there. So the level of detail's all right, isn't it, overall? Quite impressed. It's better than I expected but not as good as it needs to be to justify the modern price tag, I would say. If you disagree, let me know down in the comments. That is absolutely fine. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Achilles heel of this loco, and that, unfortunately, is the mechanism. All right, folks, welcome. Come in and take a seat and strap yourself into it because this is going to be pretty interesting. It's a shame about this because it's a beautiful... Oh, look at it. How beautiful does that look? Incredibly so. Let down, as is so often the case, though, by a terrible, terrible mechanism. So we've already seen that the Loco has no tender pickups, as is true with the latest version. No tender pickups and also no decoder socket in the tender. It's in the Loco. Maybe that sounds bad. You haven't seen it yet. Wait for that. Anyway, first of all, then, uh, removing the base of the Loco reveals no proper bearings on the wheel set. That's not very good for the money, is it? At least we do have round slots cut into the chassis, though, as opposed to square ones. That's something. Removing the body, you can see we have just a three-pole motor with no flywheel or anything like that, and we don't even have a cover over the worm drive, so that's a bit shoddy. 
and here is your 8-pin decoder socket. Now, it looks, when you sort of step back and look at the chassis, looks like there's plenty of space there, but bear in mind, that socket is underneath the floor of the cab, which means that the decoder and all of the wiring that goes with it has got to fit in that space right there. Unless, of course, you're able to struggle with the wires somehow around the motor and find a space for the decoder near the front of the chassis, where there's also very little space. But one thing's definitely for sure, it's not at all user-friendly, and it's a rather disingenuous use of the term DCC-ready, in my opinion. Backman, why would you do that? You've got a tender about less than an inch away, an empty tender, and yet you won't utilise it for the DCC decoder. Now, I realise this loco was designed quite a long time ago and things might have been different back then, but if you're going to continue to produce this loco, you need to modernise it. I see you've had no problem modernising the price. Why can't you modernise the loco? £170 or even £134.50 is far too much to pay for a loco with a mechanism as poor as this. And let's just see it run. <laughs> well, first of all, let me set this to 50% speed and run past for you. Tell me, do you think this looks realistic? <laughs> that is the speed at 50%. Despite all of those gears, look how many gears we've got. We've got a massive number of gears. They couldn't even figure out a way to gear it down so that it runs at a competent speed. And as a result, the slow speed has suffered. Look at this. Look at that, look how jerky that is. It's not even particularly slow. And all of this just looks so much worse when you've got the Hornby Hall class, which is £60 cheaper and performs way, way better. It's got the decoder socket in the tender with tender pickups. A lot of the details are much better, much more finesse. And it's £60 cheaper as well. I mean, I'm sorry if I sound a bit cross, but I'm glad I didn't pay 170 quid. that's for sure. Look at that. And you haven't seen the worst of it yet. Oh, wait till we've got it with some coaches. And yet, this has been fully serviced, fully running. It's not just, you know, 10 years old, straight out of the box onto the track. I took a lot of care to lubricate this, clean it, make sure everything's as it should be. Nope, it's just that bad. All right, pulling power then. I measured 0 0.27 newtons on the drawbar, which is way less than you'd expect. I've got, well, Atlantics that are more powerful than that. I've got tank engines that are more powerful than that. Uh, so yeah, that's only enough to haul around 18 coaches on straight and level track. Obviously, if you start introducing curves and gradients, it's going to be much less. So I've got six Hornby Great Western coaches there. Let's go and couple to those. I've tested this, so I know what's about to happen. You won't believe it, folks. In fact, you will. If you've seen my other Backman reviews, you probably will believe it. Look how inconsistent that is. Fast, slow, fast. <laughs> it's not even doing that consistently. Yeah, it changes speed all the time at the crawls. Look at that. It looked like it was wobbling there. Right, are we coupled? Yes, apparently. Okay. Yeah, make sure we're right. So let's set this to a reasonable speed and let's see how it handles Gordon's Hill, shall we? All right then, folks, watch this. And you tell me, is this how a 170 pound model should behave? Oh, look at that all but stopped on that second radius curve with six coaches. Now, if you've seen some of my other reviews, you'll know that that is not typical. Look at that, look how slow it's going. And it's not even wheel slipping, so it's not due to a lack of weight, it's just a pure pants mechanism. It's just not got the power. And there you go, that is the same speed setting with the same number of coaches on the other side of the layout, twice as fast. Now, some might say DCC may allow this to perform better, but your average Joe is not going to be able to squeeze a decoder into that little space. So that is a real disappointment. I mean, let me know, if you've got a Backman Hall, am I just unlucky? Does yours run much better? I don't know. I mean, having seen the mechanism, if we're being honest with ourselves, I don't think luck comes into it. Anyway, here comes the Hornby Hall class. Look at this. Notice the speed, how consistent that is and how competent it is at 50% speed. Yeah, the current RRP for the Harry Potter version of this loco, so bearing in mind you're also paying for the licensing, £109 RRP. They're available for less than 100 from the retailers. So much more finesse to the design. The mechanism, I mean, the mechanism's not amazing. You've only got a three-pot motor, I think, and no proper bearings, but it's still better because it's got the tender pickups and the tender decoder socket. 
and of course it runs so much more nicely look at this the crawl is superb and it's got coaches the backman one did not have coaches when i was crawling with it I think, unfortunately, Backman need to wake up, smell the coffee, and maybe drink some of it. I don't know. What a disappointment. Here we go. Here's another Hornby Hall. Alton Hall. I think this one cost me like 50 quid. <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic model. Much, much, much better. Etched nameplates. And just the list goes on. Maybe I'll do a comparison one day. Anyway, we'll catch up with the Backman then which looks beautiful, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it doesn't look gorgeous. Just don't take the body off, <laughs> otherwise you'll see the truth. So I've got some other 460 locos on the layout, a few to spot, so see if you can see the odd one out there. Coming downhill, the Backman runs very nicely, and it is at least smooth at the high speeds, as long as you don't have any curves on your layout, and <laughs> well, not many of us have those. And we go on these second radius curves again. Whoa, look at that. It's interesting, it's only Backman Locos that do that. I think it was, was it the K3 that did the same? I think so. Look at that, slowed right down. What a shame. And then look at this. I mean, the difference in performance is like night and day, isn't it? And they're not that much less powerful. 0.7 newtons less powerful. To say they're 100 grams lighter, that's not a lot of difference. So here come my ratings then for the Backman Hall class. Ooh, it's not looking good, is it? I mean, I think the clincher is Hornby have a better Hall class. And it's in their railroad range. It's a train set loco. It's £60 cheaper. Theirs is £109.99. And it's basically better in every area. But let's talk about this one. So the level of detail, I'm going to give it just 3.5 out of 5. Some of the details are nice. It's got sprung buffers, cab detail. But it's lacking finesse. You've got parting lines. You've got massively oversized lamp brackets. You've got a lot of details which are just moulded on and not separately fitted. Too much plastic, plastic reverser rod, no X name plates. Yeah, the level of detail's okay, but it's not up to modern standards and it certainly doesn't suit the RRP of £169.95. Same thing goes with the performance. I've given it 2.5. I mean, for all the gears it had inside there, it's still far too fast. At 50% speed, it races along, which means you have to turn it down on the controller, meaning that the Loco's got less power. I think that's part of the reason why the thing is so weak. It also doesn't crawl very well because the gearing favours the higher speeds rather than the slow speeds. Not the best idea. It also slows down horrendously on second radius curves, which is not at all acceptable. That leads us on to power then. I measured 0.27 newtons on the drawbar, which is only enough for this to haul around 18 coaches, which is the same as the Hornby Adams radial tank. That is a tiny tank engine, very weak thing. It's less than the Backman 3F, an 060 tender engine. It's less than the D11, a 440. It's less than the C1 Atlantic. Now that leads us on to the mechanism, man. My word, this mechanism sucks. Three pole motor, no flywheel. No proper bearings on the wheel set. No space for a decoder. It's like you can't fit a decoder in there, much less a sound decoder. No tender pickups, no tender electrical connection whatsoever. For the money, it's just no good. Absolutely no good at all. The quality then, I've given four star. The build quality at least is really good. The decoration was fantastic. I have knocked a star off for the poor quality mechanism. Perhaps four star is a bit generous even in quality, but I think I'm going to do that because I think I've been sufficiently harsh everywhere else. So it's only fair that I'm generous on quality. But for the record, I do think that's generous. Value for money then. One or two issues is always expected from any model really because nobody's perfect. But these things add up and unfortunately Backman have been blown out of the water by Hornby. Can't recommend this. Sorry folks. There we go. Total of 5.35 out of 10 into the logbook. 43rd above the Thanet Flyer, below the 52XX. Unfortunately, it just doesn't cut it. It doesn't meet modern standards. The quality is not as it should be, and the mechanism sucks. If you disagree, let me know, but I, I think it's pretty clear cut.
All right, just to finish off then, and just to make sure that the point is well and truly proven, I'm going to swap trains. I'm going to swap the Backman and Hornby trains around, see if the bad performance is just my track or something. Something that is not related to the loco. So I'll swap these over. Okay, so I'm going to try and speed match as best I can. My expectation is that because the gearing here is wrong, you're having to turn the controller down to get the speed as you want it and therefore the voltage is lower and the amount of power getting to the loco is lower. The Hornby is much better geared, which means I can turn the controller up a little bit to get the same speed, which is about there. Let's do the same with backlands then. Okay, so here comes the Backman, going to take the same radius curves, but downhill instead. Wow. Looks kind of different, doesn't it? So I think that fairly well demonstrates that we've got a lack of power, because as soon as it's off the hill, it's slowed down, noticeably. Here comes the Hornby then. Is this going to slow down to a crawl? I'm expecting a bit of a slowdown. Nope. Not really. Constant speed right the way around. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Let's try and slow the Hornby one down. I don't know whether that was a bit faster. Let's slow it down. Okay. Wow. So it is slowing down barely noticeably, but one thing it's certainly not doing is slowing down to a crawl. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear. And don't forget that loco is much lighter than the Backman. That is 100 grams lighter nearly. And yet it's hauling them slightly better. Unbelievable. And here's the Backman. I've just found it up here and stopped. Let's give it a push. There we are. Powerful, isn't it? <laughs> wow, that was awful. Right, let's have that one more time, shall we? Look at that. The introduction of any incline really knocks it for six. And if you're unlucky enough to have, I mean, this is a barely an incline, by the way. This is just the slight subsidence of the house. If you're unlucky enough to have a curve on an incline as well, let's see if we get the same result. Absolutely stops dead. And so that's the solution. That is 50% speed. Yeah, you can just see how off the gearing must be for it to run that speedily. And that also proves that it's not just a faulty motor. If the motor was faulty, it would struggle. Nope, you turn the voltage up, it can do it easily. It's just purely a lack of torque. All right, folks, well, I think we will just about leave it there. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That was really disappointing. I saw the livery, I saw the loco, and I just thought, yeah, this is going to be beautiful. And it was beautiful, but just that mechanism and the general price of the thing now really spoils it yet again. So let me know down in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Have I been fair? Have I been unfair? Obviously, these are just my opinions. Yours may differ, and if they do, that is fine. But let me know, because it's interesting. Thanks for watching then, folks. I will see you on the next one. Take care.